entire team pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Dire team pick. Radiant team pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Lycan. Dire team ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Radiant team, ban. Dire team, ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Team ban. Dire team pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Radiant team pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time.
Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Legion Commander! Radiant Team Pick. Ten seconds remaining. Seconds remaining. Dire team ban. Ten seconds remaining. Seconds remaining. Radiant team ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds. Remaining. Reserve time. Ten seconds remaining. Radiant team pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Five seconds remaining. Dire team pick. seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time.
Thank you, Paul. Yeah, that's right. I'm Gareth. Joining me is Blitz, and we are getting into game number two here. This best of three evil geniuses against Team Liquid. And not only do we have a Lycan from a Summer Man, an AA again this patch, but we've got the Storm for Sumail. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've talked to a few players that also specialize on Storm, there's like three people, but uh, most of the people agree that Storm is a very situational pick. It's not something that we're going to see every single game, but uh, for a game like this, as soon as I they picked it, what did I tell you? I said, this is a godly this Storm is, game. This is a godly Storm game because there are almost no disables on the side of Liquid, and the disables that... There are, you've got one melee range stun from Fada. When he pops the dragon form, of course, it gets a lot better, but even then, the follow up isn't fantastic. And he's really, Storm is really good against Nature's Prophet. In Ancient Apparition, Tusk, all of these non hard disable supports. So if a player is going to win a game for EG, look towards Samil making a lot happen. Okay, okay. Oh, I guess. There's... I guess you can ball lightning into snowball and stop the stun from that as well and keep yourself alive. But some of the more interesting things about EG's draft as well. Let's have a look at this. So AUI, poor man shield, looks like what is a safe lane Legion commander. Ball the faceless void for the off lane. And yeah, we've seen we've seen a bit of a shift from faceless voids away from big wombo combos and relying heavily on land chrono. Kill three people in chrono with, you know, like a meatball and all that nonsense. Oh god, look at that. See, I love the old chat uh, from, com com uh, from Complexity the other day, but PPD as well as Fanta having a bit of a go at it in the... In the I don't know if people well. know PPD very well, but he is very much being sarcastic here. <laughs> like, I know it's not clear, uh, but there's no reason Fada would bring it up at this point, right? If he was going to, he would have just played out the next game as well. So, both... Uh, Fada just trying to have a little bit of sportsmanship, making sure that he doesn't have a competitive advantage. No reason not to believe him, especially if he's going to bring it up now. Why do you have two liquids blue Valve bugged us? Liquid, liquid Kuroki. Not just one, but two. I was wondering what he was asking, whether he had a bottle of water and a can of monster or something like that, but no, he's talking about the name. So, AUI, safe lane Legion Commander. Now, this pick came in what seemed like response to the Lycan. You got that hard lock down the duel to be able to blink in onto him, but is there anything else it offers you? Uh, Wave clear against wolves and Nature's Prophet Treants? Yeah. Is that something you look for as well? That's going to be a lot of it, and also, if they were planning on taking the Storm pick, press the attack is very good for getting rid of their one stun. Ooh. Obviously going to have some applications in picking off a hero like Nature's Prophet as well. If Nature's Prophet tries to go for that split push, you have somebody that can instantly jump, keep it locked down for a hard amount of time. Well, it looks like the players might need a, a black sheet or a black blanket to block themselves in and stop what I can see, but hopefully we'll get this all sorted out. Now, EG. This is, of course, the winner bracket. They're one game down against Team Liquid currently. PPD, he gets himself the Disruptor. We've seen him play, you know, a lot of, a lot of these kind of selfless supports, the Abaddon, the Bane. You kind of sit behind your core heroes and you make sure that they can stay alive. Rarely in that kind of initiation role, but here, if EG can get on the aggressive... How, how many ways of catch have they got here? Glimpse, the, the ball roll in from the Storm, they've got Jump Chrono, Blink Duel, and to top it all off, they've got this bounty to give vision across all enemy heroes as well. So it's not just we've got catch, but we've got the vision advantage potentially. If you remember the combo that Ehome used, I think it was Ehome. Uh, that was CT... Was it Ehome? I'm pretty sure it was Ehome. It was Ehome versus... Secret at TI5, where they ran Bounty Hunter plus Storm to get back into the game and help them win. This is a very dangerous combination, mainly because all it takes is a few kills. Storm is a very snowball-oriented hero, mm -hmm. I would know. Plus, Bounty Hunter helps with that quite uh, quite well. Probably one of my top three favorite supports to play with when I am playing Storm, just because of what he can do for you. He enables you to snowball, he scouts ahead of you, which is so important for a hero like Storm. You want to know what you're walking into. 
And he gives you lots of money. Yeah. And he gives you lots of money. Oh. Haven't talked enough about Liquid's lineup, yeah, though. I was just about to look yeah. towards this one. In the last game, we focused so much on EG's lineup because of what we thought the track could do. But in a game like this... Tempo control is key. Yes. And what... Lycan, with Nature's Prophet, very heavy on the tempo control. Once get like, what, seven, eight minutes? Maybe maybe look at ten minutes and they're going to be pushing towers? Yeah. Well, we saw out of Vega, they used to be, in my opinion, the best team against Bounty Hunters because of their ability to five-man. Uh, carry sentries and dust around like crazy at all times and just push out the other team to make that bounty hunter useless of course the one downside of bounty hunter as we saw is he doesn't add anything into these team fights you have to expect your teams to carry you you have to look for these one-off pickoffs is Jirax just going for the subtle wave and the crowd reacts but the two pretty little finish boys look at them Matu and Jirax man now that just threw off my <laughs> I was having this really good point oh, did... You see his wave, and now... Yeah, so Vega, they decided to just straight up push, right? They had heroes like Tusk that would just couch out the Bounty Hunter when he tried to go for one of those one-off track kills. And that's why you see Tusk often against the Bounty Hunter, because you have that ability to gap close against him. The eye shards uh, can hold him in place. You have things that can scout ahead for you as well. And that's also why we see the Lycan. Because now you've got a hero that will punish this bounty hunter. You're not going to team fight against a Lycan who's got Necrobook 3? Okay, there goes a tier 2 tower. Repeat the cycle. There goes Roshan. And bounty hunter at some point has to fight into this. And any sort of Necro 3 hero obviously lends itself to being quite good against the hero. Alright then, now another thing to look at. Last game we saw that Lone Druid allow the AA to get his level 6 very fast. You know, we saw Matumman switch back into the jungle once he got his Midas and Kuroki sat up there for a good, what, 4 or 5 waves getting into that level 6. Matumman Lycan can do that with his hero. He is able to once he gets like his Vlad so he can dip back into the jungle. But EG, I'm not sure they're going to be allowing that. Place some aggressive wards into the jungle and make sure they know where Matsuba Man is. Maybe try and snipe him off and not go for the AA. Yeah, it seemed like EG in that last game just had a little bit of uh, flaws in where they wanted to go in terms of with their bounty hunter. It just never really seemed like there was a good place for Fear to go. Remember when he went mid and it was that 3-on-3 three three engagement and both him and Sumil died? Mm -hmm. They weren't really sure uh, if they were going to take that full-on fight. Then they went top, but they weren't able to make anything happen in that lane because Bobo was level 1 for such a long time. This time around though, they've got... a Bulba special in the Faceless Void. Again, the Bounty Hunter for Fear. Hopefully they can make something happen if EG are going to win this game. Because at the same time, Liquid, their 5-man team is very strong. It's absolutely insane. Chilling touch on all these heroes. You've got a lot of different range shows for this. Tusk is your gap closer, Nature's Prophet. Plus, like in lots of summons, is the game is still paused, so we're back on camera. Hello. Dragon form and shapeshift for the DK and the Lycan. And you know, you were saying earlier that we've kind of moved away from you know relying on multiple cooldowns, big team fight ultimates. You know, your your, your big combos, and now you're looking at maybe one or two heroes that want to expend those ultimates and just win a team fight straight out. Are these two ultimates that Liquid are going to be maybe holding on to a little bit until they push into a tower and until they look for fights? Yeah, you're. You know, the one thing about Liquid's lineup is, like we talked about, low cooldowns. You can go for fights early on, and often. EG, on the other hand, can actually fight too. I think I was talking about this with Paul on the panel. It just seems like the low cooldown meta, where you want to be able to have, be in fighting shape at all times, be able to rotate his five. I think we talked about that too earlier when we weren't casting. Uh, looks like... I guess Storm is one of the kings of low cooldowns. Yeah. Ball lightning, remnants, remnants, what, three and a half seconds? I mean, we, we saw some L the other day go for the storm and he's still kind of stuck with the you know, farming storm. He didn't go for early points in Vortex. I, I heard a couple of players uh, you know, talking to No Diggity the other night and they were saying, oh, maybe it's time, maybe it's time to go back for the Vortex build, just be active early on. But We saw, we saw, uh, who was it? S4 go for it. Man, I could just talk about storm builds and why it's cool. <laughs> I don't even we've know. Got, we've got time. To. We've got time. I just, I have no bias towards teams. Just this hero. Just this hero. And it, it's got to be obnoxious for some people, but for the one person that really cares about this stuff, the reason why you decided to go for the vortex, and part of the reason why uh, storm became weird was because two things. One, there's now that bottleneck at level 11, where it's so hard to get oh, yeah. over, right? Where you, where you have to get a lot of experience to get from 11 to 12. So before the build was 4142. Uh, which adds up to 11, right? Mm. 
So now at level 11 you have that first only one level of Vortex, which isn't very useful. And the reason why you went for that was because you could clear jungle stacks really efficiently. But now you're in a position where you can't clear jungle stacks efficiently at all with Remnant. And Vortex, you need to get at least two levels of it to be effective in fights. So what does that mean? It means you have to skip out either on a level of Overload or a level of Remnant so that you can go for the extra level of the Electric Vortex. Okay. So now you start to see variations in the build where you can go for something like 4 2 3 2. Uh, usually that just means 4 in a Remnant, 2 in a Vortex, 3 in a Overload, 1 into Ulti. Or I I think S4 was going for uh, 3 3 2 2. Okay. So it's just something that players are kind of tinkering with, and from game to game it will differ depending on what yeah. you need and what you want. Oh, wait, no, he went 3 3 3 2. Put him in. Three, uh, three, three, two. It okay. just depends on how you're going to use the storm and how active you're going to get. All right, now that that's done, we should never talk about that hero game because yeah, uh, we I'm focus way too much on it now. Perfectly fine with that. We'll pause though, so I hope that was okay during that time period. That's the only time I'll ever talk just about. Just make sure you know tweet at Blitz Dota or Blitz underscore Dota with all your storm pictures, your fan art. I feel really bad now that we we should have had to talk. Make sure you teach him how to play the hero because he's got no bloody clue what he's talking about. Storm is not in his wheelhouse, is it, Blitz? Oh mm, yeah. No, not anymore anyway. More of a. What, what do you play now? I really like Ember nowadays. Yeah? It's very fun. Now that Invoker is... Yeah, now that Invoker is a little bit out of the meta, it feels better. And the supports are kind of weak against it right now that... I was talking to Cinderin about it. There's like a pub meta that kind of gets evolved out of whatever people see that the mm -hmm. pros play, and Ember seems okay right now. Okay. Well, this game just... is still paused, by the way. We're just trying to fix some technical issues so that no shenanigans happen, by the way, for people on stream that are kind of curious as to know why We keep just... flashing yeah. back from camera to camera. I, I keep, you know, wondering. I don't want to be picking my nose or anything when the camera switches back to us and, you know, Blitz may be cuddling me a little bit. I'm not, I'm not capped, but I am warm. Uh, people are clapping. I wonder if we're getting back into things, but the game is still... Oh, like, just clapping for Kuro. Look at him. He's rolling his team up, getting them pumped for the game coming through. Now, uh, Legion Commander. We actually saw Legion... Oh, oh no, we, we can't go back to that topic, can we? The infinite scaling heroes, the Legion and the Storm. Was it Alliance against OG? It was Alliance against OG. Alliance against two. OG. Yeah, they, they had, had a Cottle, though. They had a Cottle. Yeah. So. But that was a much better game for OG, just because they had a lot of different ways to deal with the Storm. <laughs> Whereas in this game, if you look at uh, Team Liquid's lineup, they've got to burst him down in Fata's ultimate. Okay. Well, that looks like some males ready. Fata's definitely not done. Now, uh, evil geniuses. This, of course, is a bit of a rivalry between them and Team Liquid. TI3. Even then, it, it goes that. beyond that. It's, this is an organizational games. thing, yeah. In the region, I mean, Liquid is, you know, a European org, but it's always had NA teams, and EG, of course, has pretty much always had NA teams. There's been that battle between them across games, through StarCraft, maybe not so much in CSGO, you know, EG don't, uh, don't dabble in that, but Dota 2 as well. In Dota 2, most of them have kind of avoided each other for the most part, uh, so we haven't really had a lot of clashes, but... And since then, both of these teams have been incredibly competitive. The last time we saw them play, obviously, was at the Shanghai Major, where uh, Liquid knocked EG out. EG finishing a very respectable third. Obviously, that was with a different lineup. And... That was a 2-0 as well. And I think part of this, too, is kind of proving who's the better captain. You know, PPD... For some reason, always lineup changes around him, but he keeps his squad steady. Like whatever he, whoever he has to play with, it's like I, I, we can make this work. He's the common factor between all these teams. Exactly, he's the guy that you can point to and say, or him, him, Fear and Sumail. They've been together as a unit for a lot of changes, and they still made a lot of things work. They add AUI, a player that they want TI with. Bulba, who was their coach at that event. So this team, you know, they've got to feel pretty good about their chances, obviously getting third and we play. Looking pretty good here at this event. Beating both uh, VP, beat VP twice, right? And they beat, also they've been at this event. They lost to Newbie, after they beat VP, then they beat VP again? I guess that's what it was. Mm. We'll make sure that the trifecta of players can hold this one together. 
team liquid how, how long have they been together now have fun fun Fyung's formed what sort of that was during mlg new orleans qualifier time it was like straight after ti5 yeah wasn't it was it? straight, straight after, after, after ti5 TI like three weeks a month or something after ti you know what's funny they were when Kuro and Fada were thinking about who to play with, they actually had considered KP. Oh yeah? From Newbie. Because mm -hmm. they know that he sp spoke English and was a very good player, but ultimately decided not to because if it's not a perfect fit, obviously him being Australian would cause some issues. They didn't want to waste his time. Fly but him it, over to Europe. Yeah, exactly. And if it doesn't work out, then it would put him in an opposition. But random fact, right? Now that he ends up on such a... <laughs> the best team in the world now? Yeah, that's... I did go on a bit of a crazy run, but OG did topple them. Let's look at look at that Roshan. It's that beautiful work that Epicenter have done oh, here, honestly. Oh, that thing honestly. is awesome. This, the team intros, the... The stage is absurd. Projection mapping onto these nice little... I don't know what to call like statues is, is the word that comes to mind, but... Yeah. Then... What people can't see is if you look up at the roof, it actually tells you when the game is nighttime and daytime. So right now, obviously it's daytime, you see this giant sun reflected by clouds? It's clouds, blue sky. It's awesome. And then as soon as it turns night, you look up at the roof and it just turns dark. And with Night Stalker, when he pops his ultimate, there's bats that appear and it's all, you know, super spooky. We sound like we're product placementing, but I... It is re legit cool. It is yeah, really, it really, really is. good looking. I've never seen something like that. I looked, I remember because we were on the beanbags and I looked up and I was like, that thing is amazing. <laughs> I'm not, I'm the least product shilling person. Uh-huh. But that one was awesome. I still haven't tried Russian McDonald's though. I remember I asked oh, for that. Really? Yeah, oh, every morning. every event you go to, every country you go yeah, to, I gotta try their McDonald's. Did you have a spreadsheet or something? No, but I've kind of got this like internal ticker in my head for what's good. What's your ranking? So, what's your top five McDonald's? Because you said uh, I don't know if I'm biased, but Korean McDonald's is really sick. You said Croatia was good. Croatia was good too. Yeah. Okay. Croatia was good too. Why is America not on there? America was pretty bad. I don't know why I said it was. I, I'm an American. <laughs> American McDonald's is bad. Yeah, it's great. Oh, but looks like we're getting the just to give you guys an update so you know what's going on. They are, putting, not, they are literally putting black sheets on yeah. top. Oh, they're trying to the sell this issue right now, so uh, we can ensure fair play. Just don't want you guys to think anything weird is happening or that I've, it's going to take I've, too much longer. Yeah, you guys haven't seen the chat as we're going through this, but uh, you know, EG have said we don't mind, we don't think you're, you're going to be cheating. We can play the game if you want. Oh, of course, yeah. the admins and Liquid just want to be you know, perfectly sure that no one thinks there's no chance whatsoever that Why? any you're unfair not advantage. No, of course not. EG just want to play. Yeah, they've been in positions where I, I, I think they respect Liquid as mm -hmm. a team, so they'll say whatever. Let's just go on. But obviously, this. You know, why even, why even risk it? Because it looks like this will, the problem is being fixed pretty soon. Oh, we're back in camera again. Cool. Oh, hello. How are you doing? Good. I look shorter than you on this camera, but I don't think that I am. You look shorter than me? Yeah, because I have, I have long legs, but uh, short I think, body. I think I'm a bit taller than you. Are you? How tall are you? Oh, I, I'm like, I'm, I'm six foot. Oh, okay, uh, you are. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, well, I'm like between 5'11 and 6 foot. I just, I just like to say I'm 6 foot, you know, to sound yeah. I'm 6 foot, you know. But I think I'm 181 centimeters, which is just below. I have no idea what the conversion is. That's why I said 6 foot. I appreciate it. <laughs> yep, you're welcome. What's Peter said now? How's it going? Yeah, we're, we're actually watching people up on top of the boots. They're, yeah. uh, they're sewing, they're knitting, they're ripping fabric up and looking pretty good. <laughs> And, uh, Hopefully it'll just be a few more minutes, guys, as you can gaze into the glorious Roshan mouth that they built. Yeah, that, that, so that, that thing there is actually just white. Like, in, in real life, without anything on it, it's just a white statue. But there's projectors and all this projection mapping, kind of like we had at TI5, where they had, uh, you know, ultimates shooting out over the screen. We had it at the Frankfurt Major as well, where when an ultimate is cast, projectors show on the, kind of on the field of battle. And actually, they've, they've got that up on the top as well, Blitz. Yeah. Sonic waves and stuff start flying across the, the whole stadium, and it's very cool to watch. Yeah. You know what I love about this crowd? Oh, Whenever God. random Navi chants just start... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, during the OG newbie yeah. game, it's like, oh gee, oh gee, newbie, yes. newbie, and then someone goes, Navi, Navi. Okay. Dabai, harosh, harosh, we're getting underway again, it looks like the game has begun again. And of course, for those of you just joining us, this is game two between Evil Geniuses and Team Liquid in a best of three. Game one went the way of Team Liquid, and they've uh, 
actually started to group themselves up. We saw a 4v4 top rune battle in the previous game. It looks like we might see something even bigger, a 5v5 rune battle now in this game as they all start pottering around, but Fear is the little There's no way devil. you fight this. He's hiding, he's scouting, he knows what's going on, and he will tell his team to get the hell out. Yeah. Liquid would win that fight handily. They have Tusk, they've got Ancient Apparition, uh, they have five different heroes that could fight, and EG effectively have two. Even yeah. then, it's not great. <laughs> one Liquid. and a half. Liquid smoked up for this. Where this is they? a really odd situation that's developing here. Is it looks like they're trying to make sure that Sumail doesn't get a bounty room, but... He's gonna get the bottom one. Yeah, that was odd. I think they were hoping that EG would rotate to top, and they could take the fight up there. But instead, 50 gold goes down the drain. Don't get anything out of it. Now, how do the lanes actually look? Mind Control, Nature's Prophet up at top is... Oh, PPD actually went for the smoke. He's gonna go for the courier. Oh, is he? Cheeky little devil. Yeah, there's just obviously not gonna be a level 1 gank for a Storm Spirit, but might find the courier with this. It's gonna be relatively kind of delayed with the fact that it's a Stout Shield and a Quelling Blade and Tango's bought by the DK. Maybe he was hoping... Well... This was odd, because if he saw Fado's item build, then he has to know. Instead, he's just going to go back for the harass, but he had to... If he clicks Fado, then he sees the Quelling Blade and the Stout Shield, mm -hmm. and you have gold left over for Salve if he want it. So if he doesn't go for the Salve there, he would have bought the Salve in the first place, is what I mean. Okay. Well, Mind Control, 1v1 up against AUI on that Legion Commander. So poor Man Shield on her means that they really wanted to set up these lanes this way. You deal with the Treants, don't get harassed too much, and then they've placed Fear down towards his bottom lane in a dual lane with Bulba's Void, while Kuroki, this AA, you have to be babysat a little bit by Jerax's Tusk, because it is a dangerous spot to be in down there. I'm a Tumor Man on the Lycan as well, just trying to get his last hits in, but it's still the mid lane. Bata deals with a Thunderstrike from PPD, and Sumail, he's sitting pretty 6-4, and four, while DK 3-0, and zero, but again, Blitz, we saw this in the previous game. If Fata gets the disadvantageous matchup, the DK against the DP, he gets, uh, you know, demolished in lane in CS terms. Sumail tripled up on him, it was like 30 to 4 compared to 10 and 0 by, uh, by 6 or 7 minutes. But this time around, a Storm Spirit against the DK. How is this matchup actually going to pan out? Uh, the Storm is obviously going to do quite well against any sort of melee hero. Storm usually thrives on matchups where he's even. Any matchup where he's going to get even farm in, he's going to be incredibly happy in. Matchups that he's going to get ahead in, he's going to be even happier because Storm is always going to be the hero that you want to scale a little bit better going into the mid game. And if you're going to help out a mid lane, or if you're going to help out a lane, it's going to be the mid one. <laughs> Typically though, laning phase doesn't mean too much just because of what you can do in the mid game with certain lineups. Especially if you look at Liquids, it's going to be very mid game centered when they get uh, their summons up and running. Kuroki has left this point. He's about to hit level 2, but he hasn't skilled anything yet, and I've just realized they've got Howl and Chilling Touch if they want it. It's a hell of a lot of damage. Yeah, that's why they wanted to take that level 1 fight. Bulba, he's still got his time walk, of course. He's trading hits nicely with Jerax there. Beer still waiting around, level one and a half, not getting too much done in this laning phase, but if there's ever an opportunity to strike where, you know, maybe Liquid overextend on the Void and think, right, we can get him, we can kill him off, or we can do devastating damage to him, Fear is there for the backstab, and maybe the trade-off kill, if he can find it. He's moved up to top as well. Now, AUI, Legion, Quelling is up, but Mind Control, not really pressured too much in this lane. He's nearly got his face boots, and that is maybe where he starts to look to TP to other lanes, and uh, again, we, we, we look at this DK and Nature's Prophet, they were defensive tri lane with great tower pushing power, and then you add in the Dragonite and the Furion, who can make up the numbers and come in. There's a hell of a lot of damage between them. Yeah. Still, EG are getting a lot more out of the laning phase. The Void is in a position where he's not very scared against this tri lane, or he shouldn't be with that time walk, is they're gonna go on him and Bobo might not be okay here as the Ice Shards catch him out. Sure. Chilling Touch. touch. Is there the Howl with a cold feet and Bulba oh, very fast through, but it's not enough. Liquid and first blood and fear for the first time in four minutes. Wasn't there, wasn't ready to try and save the day. He's not a saving hero, but just putting your body into the mix might have pushed Liquid out with that. Yes, both me and Bulba heavily underestimating the amount of damage that Liquid put, could put out. And obviously they've got two different ways to catch him with the eye shards or the snowball. 
Probably didn't think he was gonna die down there. Neither did I, but would end up getting the kill anyways. That's gonna be the first blood helping out this lane. And up at top, like we were talking about, mind control already having the phase boots. Gonna hit level five after these two range creeps as well. Really good scan there from EG. They realized that okay, they killed bottom lane, both AA and Tusk. In in game number one, they love to smoke up. You know, they get a kill on off lane, they smoke up, they move mid. So the scan actually sees that the Tuscar was sitting behind this tier one towards the mid lane. So whoever did that on EG, well played by you, because Sumel, he freely goes back into the jungle and says, well, I'm not gonna get ganked. I'm actually gonna go and farm. I'm gonna get myself a nice bit of money, stack up some more camps for me. Fused raindrops though is an interesting pickup by him. Oh, I was just talking to him about this and uh, some other Storm players about whether or not this item was viable on Storm and just feels good is the best way to put it. It, it helps out your some of your survivability. Uh, the mana regen doesn't feel fantastic, but it's just nice. It's there. It's not massively noticeable, but it's just... It's one of those feel-based things where you can't okay. really explain, but... If you play the hero and you play with it, it does... It feels good. Nice. See how it works out for him then. Mind control. He does not feel safe. He does not feel his top lane is where he should be. AUI, he has hit level 6, and with the phase boots, the movement speed could have allowed him to catch up with the duel. Got a lot of damage back onto mind control as well. Sits back behind his tier 1, but just... Look at this, Fanta pops his 6 and starts wailing in on this tier 1 in the middle lane, while down at bottom, they have got a catapult wave, they'll have the wolves, the howl, and they've got shreds on Matuma Man Bulba without this dark seer on him, without any kind of wave clear or ability to safely drag aggro back. You know, he, he's pulled one melee creep away. The this second wave comes in, and you're right, the mid tower is dropping. They're gonna go for, or they wanted to go for Fada before they see this haste rune, but PPD is still gonna come in. They can bring him back if they want. So level 2 glimpse into the kinetic field. Oh, there are more heroes coming here for this. Hold him, here comes Liquid though, and Fada's still alive. They jump in with some air, looking for the damage back onto him with a press the attack. They're not gonna get it just yet. Oh, Fada's is still up with a stun back onto AUI. They're gonna try and find the kill back onto him, but it's Jirak who drops. A two for one so far, but Samael's got no mana! He's got nothing left to give! As if the dose of attacks, he's nearly out, but not quite! Storm! Not enough! What a turnaround by Liquid is now they're up four to one. This mid tower might go down as Fear TV's in, but no dust. But this mid tower is still gonna go down. We talked about how important it was for almost all teams in that last game, and with that turnaround, at first they thought they had it, but Dragon Knight being so naturally tanky with those magic raindrops. Those infused raindrops and that magic, magic stick. stick. Yeah, the early pickups just make him so tanky. That was the dual damage under four different heroes from EG, and they still couldn't bring him down. It's, it's intelligence like that where, you know, Fanta can often go under the radar as a mid player. You, you, you look at him in the mid lane, and you're like, well, he, he lost mid to X player. He lost mid in this matchup, but it's, it's often the way for him, but just because of the heroes that he's given. You know, he loses out on last hits, he, he loses out in the kind of naked matchup that he's given, but still, with the item choices he makes, with that intelligent decision-making he has, he's able to stay alive, and now they TP up towards top lane, the snowball into AUI is ready, and Jirak oh, goes straight on in. Mind control is ready, and AUI is not long for this world, and the chilling touch damage is more than enough to wipe the floor with him. And this frenetic pace that Liquid are playing right now, in both games so far, it seems like EG just can't keep up. We heard in the pregame interview, PPD said the team who plays faster is going to win, and so far it's all been liquid in both games. Fail. Sumail goes to this top rune. I talked about it before. No real way to gap close for liquid and get the stun onto a hero like Storm, but still finding kills around the map. Bulba has been given a little bit of breathing room down a bottom lane, though. His face is void. He's hit his six. He's got the Chronosphere available. I think the issue is that they don't have the best things to pair with the Chronosphere. Hmm. They don't have the natural damage ability of something like the Witch Doctor Ultimate or... Uh, An Invoker or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Even Storm with the right clicks aren't going to add too much. So going for this oh, kill on the ton Kuroki. Not sure how this entire situation has oh, actually for the duel, happened, but EG, they're AUI, gonna get they've got the dual damage onto AUI. Winner for him, plus 10. Thank you very much. That was a complete I, freebie for them. I'm looking down at bottom lane and I realize, hang on a second, Kuroki, is he setting up for something? What's he waiting for? He, he cut through trees and he's sitting there, but PPD had his number. Yeah, he was waiting. And now Liquid, looks like they want to go up to top, but... Gonna get spotted out by EG's ward, potentially. 
Might have seen Jerex cross that line. His father is going to make his way into EG's jungle. As they should know that AUI is up here, but I'm not sure they have the damage for this. They're going to have to bring in both Mind Control and his ultimate if they're going to hope to get this kill as mid. They see Sumail. And Kuroki's not level 6 yet. You know, talking about game number 1 where his AA was pretty spot on with his 6 timing. Ah, oh, the Dragon Tail Snowball. They've got the start into Sumail. There's the connected feels, but it's not gonna save your body wall. Well, AUI wants to join this fight as well. Running forward into Jerex the Chrono, ready Good from Bulma. Now time dilation's all they need, and the duel back on the Jerex to clear him up. The drums picked up by AUI. Another winner. Plus 20. Now, up the top. What's happening there? He's gonna get gone on, but nice not little. gonna do enough damage to kill him, and even though he doesn't have mana, they are gonna escape as they do lose that top tower. And they blew the glyph there for that one. It's not gonna have it for that bottom push when it inevitably comes. Did did Jerax just Jerax just ate the Oh okay. That was old Chrono. And caught out with Summerman and then jumped with the male storm. There's been a lot of damage, that's a shape ship, but the tool man. I don't know about this, the snowball saved Jerax, he holds him in, runs him forward, ball up, they're dropping him low, but the man's still alive! The male zipped across, they don't get the vision, they don't oh, he even get it out! Oh some male cannot get the final click in and he's out of matter as well. Jerax keeps ripping through his HP with all center body block up as well by control TP's forward. Some male's gone in too no. deep, he's gone too far, he knew too much, but now he's dead! Unbelievable that Liquid make the save for their man up there at the bottom, but Latumba Man juking and jiving his way out of that. And now this is going to lead to that bottom push, and we talked about how they didn't have the control factor for the male Storm in the mid game, but they don't need it if he wastes all of his mana trying to kill that doggy man. He nearly had him though. He was so close. That was... Oh, that's going to hurt them so much. That slows down the storm's progression that much further. Mind Control going to pick up the mech soon. We talked about how difficult it was going to be for EG to fight into that lineup. Storm, not one of those heroes that you want to get into these early 5-on-5 five -five engagements with. Bounty Hunter in a similar situation. The Faceless Void, obviously, very cooldown reliant. Liquid just might hit a timing where EG can't really defend or fight. DK nearly armored. Matsu, what's he got? 800 gold on top of Vlad's treads. Too shabby, and you've already mentioned that the mind control wrapping up his item progression pretty nicely. While EG, what do they look to do? They've lost all tier one so far, and I think it might be a smoke time try and catch Liquid off guard. But Samil wants to continue farming here. He has to. We just saw. Literally, just he He just can't fight. He's got the yeah. snowball. He's just got to get these big items up. But Liquid are going to go for a play. They want to try to get aggressive here. They do have the ward vision. They're gonna run into fear and AUI. Doesn't get hit though. Double sentry down. Fear. They've got no dust. I can't see him any further. Mind control's coming in though. Now they've got the dust and fear. The sprout and the hunt scout from Jerax and Mind Control clear him up while Volva up on the front line. Really low. Two seconds until Chrono. Volva, he's thinking about this one. The jump in from some mail onto Chiroki. Mind Control. Time to sprint out of that one. There's the ice blast down to the storm. The duel went back onto where you want. The PPD on the back end. The Chrono's had a storm on the bumper. Oh, they're gonna save him. Much of a match. In with one swipe. And down with two. Bumper dropping low in the air. We go. EG, they clear up one, two. But much of a match. Look at the three. He's chasing out Bulba, that's AUI trying to look for my control though, the nature's profit. Printed out, the phase boots are up and the sprout is ready. Oh, the wall the blocks wall, them in. The wall blocking. AUI, your phase boots are there. Can you really chase this one down? Yeah, he's Drums. still going for it as he pops the next drop charge. The man is ready to fight though. He will block the entry up on top of that ramp. Good disengage by Liquid, but EG still pick up a decent amount right there as... That combination is going to help them. The gold change does go in their favor. Most importantly, they finally get that level 6 on the fear. And now these little engagements can really start to turn in their favor, but they really would have liked that 6 beforehand. Still AUI, 1700 gold, almost has that blink dagger. EG nice. really need to take this next fight with the track though. Now it's going to be the jump and catch that they really desperately need. The track, like you mentioned, on the Bounty Hunter. But back to your point about Bulba with the uh, combinations, this Chrono, you know, it's it, it's good lockdown. It pairs decently with the Disruptor, the Static Storm. They got the kill on Fata, but that, that's, that's one kill. One kill on a DK while Matsuma Man just roared through the rest of the fight. And he's nearly got his Necro 1 completed. It's just difficult for them to go for these big teamfight lockdowns because of how mobile 
a lot of these Liquid Heroes can be. It's going to come down to who AUI decides to go for in duels as well. And EG can't really or haven't really itemized, you know, for or picked heroes for taking Roshan. Early. There's, there's very little minus armor or anything like that. Exactly. So if they want to take the Aegis, they've, they've got to win a fight. And it might just come down to Liquid waltzing into the pit and saying thank you very much. Liquid trying to just get map control before they make any sort of play like that, though. It's, uh, they pick up the Necro Book 1 on the Matama Man and that armlet on the Fada. That might actually just prompt them to decide to go for... A straight up push is EG. The only wave clear that they have is going to be the overall odds from this Legion commander. Yeah, that's exactly what they're going to go for. Is it seems to be the target. Is Fada's going to get gone on with the Thunder Strike, and they're going to bring it back for this. And the Snappy Storm, he goes for the track, but you know, use three ulties on him. They get the dual win now. What about the rest of the Liquid Vortex back? Mark is dragged in. The AO3 the the Ice Blast catches them. A map to chase them down. Storm is gone. Howie, oh, you cannot find the Wolfram at the moment. Tactical is there. He's coming low to Metaus. He gets the kill back. Mind control, can you the get any more? more? To mail! Oh, they gonna grab the <laughs> Long range snipe from Jirax! And a buyback from Samel. Are oh, they He's gonna try and use these tracks coming through? There's the Oh, he does it! He stopped up as well! Samel jumps forward, the track on the mind control, they want this goal, they want the money, and he's gonna get it! But the track can expire! Jirax! Chase down the mail. he'll get two for his buyback, but Blitz was that buyback worth it? In a way, just because of the amount of XP he grabs, he's level 12. Almost a sick play from Jerax, getting onto that high ground to dodge that shuriken and that storm's initial roll, but... Still, a lot of that fight... Did get three of those tracks off, but it did cost you a buyback on storm, so not the kind of lead that they wanted. Still, they don't lose the tower, most importantly. And that's gonna reset a lot of these timings from Liquid. No dragon form for another 40 seconds, it's gonna buy EG a little bit of breathing room. This time around, it doesn't, like, EG want to allow Liquid to just run all over them. We're still closing in on that Blink Dagger for AUI, but a little bit of a pickup here from Bulba that I've noticed, and we saw this from Bulldog the other day on Alliance, the and Loda, the Echo Saber on Faceless Void. <laughs> okay, now I said Liquid might want to just walk into the Roche Pit and take it, but honestly, with five heroes alive from AG, I wasn't expecting it as brash as this. They know that Chrono's down. That's the most important spell right now for EG to be able to contest this. The good news for EG though is they have a lot of different Roche heroes. During their most dominant era, TI5, Storm plus Roche Pit, one of the more scary ventures for them is they don't have that hard lockdown like we talked about, and tracks are coming up for... Sumail up on top of that nice little spire, and he's going to keep himself from his remnants, giving vision, put more attack down, but equally mind control is sprouting up on high ground as well to try and give the intel back to Liquid and Sumail. Thinking Sumail. about this, EPD runs forward, but it's the fight kicking off. That storm it captures two, and in comes AUI with a draw. That's all that good there as well. The ice pack back onto them though. EG, they're dropping low. The winner back onto AUI, but the snowball forward. Who can the catch is Jericho Lord? There's no one coming through except for Mind Control, who looks for the kill. The storm, the final hit. They've caught them. Liquid, they're actually doing it now. Back into the rush they go. Despite the four man chrono, still unable to win that fight. Liquid just a little bit too strong with that AA Ice Blast and that mech. Now it's going to be this easy Roche. With all the tracks up on them, still, they don't care. Is everybody from EG still down? No storm available. And the Tumber Man's going to pick up the Aegis. Liquid further getting map control out of this. Mata is the only one, it seems, that's dying during these chronos. They, they lock him down, they try and kill him off, realizing that he's popped his dragon form. This arm that's annoying will we'll actually try and focus him down, and they succeed. They yeah. get dual wins on it. And AUI is racking up damage. Yeah, the good news, though, for EG is they're still getting a lot of levels on Sumail. And on the flip side of things, Liquid, Fada's already stagnated at level 10, not going to get over that level 11 hump at any time soon. Sumail's still the highest level in the game, still has a reasonable amount of farm, not too far behind, but a Liquid's lineup. They are geared for getting into these kinds of engagements early on. Maelstrom, Nature's Prophet, Lycan. Is that Necro 2 over in the career? It looks like it is available for him and very close to Necro 3. How many towers are left? Tier 2 on, on his last legs. Very little HP left and Tier 2 up at top. Still a little bit left, but Bulba, EG, they're very concentrated at shoving out these waves, aren't they? Just keep Delirium away and across the other side of the river as, as much as possible for now, at least. They know the push is going to come soon. You're going to try to play a little bit greedy. Liquid's one downside is going for these mid-game pickoffs aren't as strong, so EG are farming with impunity. They do have good defensive ward vision now. This fear's going to scout. 
Bada coming into his jungle. They're gonna get the track off too. Nobody from Liquid here to punish this quite yet. As mind control TPs to the left. Fear, just trying to avoid vision is he should be fine in this situation. It does look like he's okay. Like yeah. Tumbleman, he's scouted out a number here of EG. AUI being one of them. PPD returns himself back to the tier three. AUI is getting a lot of dual damage too. He is. Was it plus 58 now? It looks like. Yeah. This game is still fairly heavily in Liquid's favor. But they are getting a decent amount of dual damage. The Storm does have a really good amount of levels. And the one downside of going for this five man play from Liquid, or five man play in general, is you do typically get a little bit behind in levels. It's pretty nice, though, the fact that Matuma Man with the Aegis is able to push tier two mids. You know, like we saw from game one with the Lone Druid, he is off. They might just keep going. Dragon Form is up for a reasonable amount of time. Matuma Man does have that Aegis and the Necro 3. Oh boy. They've got so many different summons to go for this. EG, are you ready for this? Are you prepped? I mean, Samel still yet to have that Bloodstone. He's closing in on it, and he's actually sending his courier back out to the secret shop to finish it off. But Liquid, taking the tier three down to a third of his HP and well there's the glyph expended. EG will try and hold on to this. There's no glimpse onto Matua Man. Oh, now there is. Back into the field. The dual win back onto Aoi as well. Has the Aegis gone only though? Well Storm, Bloodstone ready. Could be the jump that EG have been looking for. Tracks just keep flowing out. Keep and vision and also the threat of gold being given over to your enemies there and liquid they don't want to get involved in this fight right here they might find that they're looking for the glimpse right now and that's going to mean liquid has to take this fight or at least gather together track plus glimpse obviously being a very strong combination look at that trapped in the shards ppd but there's no dragon form and like liquid well just go back to farming up these lanes They've got to get back as a team. In that situation, Gareth, it's really easy for one to get picked. Picks. Exactly. And that's why they decided to back as a group, but oh, you might get picked off here. Here is the one, the Ice Blast. Barely catches him. Is he going to drop slow with Gearax? Where is the shot that finishes him off? But it's a track kill and a buyback. Fear, do you really want to come into this battle again? They're holding on to Chrono as well as Samael. The dual back to Gearax, but he comes to life with a big bad wolf. Chrono lands on two of them, those mind control and Matsu are both caught in. Matsu, we'll get that one as well, but Samael, there we go. Damage back. Masses of units in this area, but Man dies. He doesn't have a second life and Matsu trying to hold his ground and battle through this, but EG might have found the way into this fight as AUI wins the duel coming up. 29 seconds on the look for the kill. They don't care about that one. Matsu, Matsu, Static Storm, Matsu dead. Four gone for Liquid and Kuroki ATPs. No glimpse and no shuriken. But EG, that's not defending your high ground. That's not defending your tier threes. That's Liquid maybe getting a little bit too overzealous with... Hey, look, there's a bounty there. We'll kill him. Yeah, they found the opportunity. They thought it was going to be a one-off kill and... Really underestimating the amount of damage that EG can put out. Oh, wait a second. Sumail, he got the Bloodstone and now he's down to 9. It, Bloodstone got buffed to 12, right? Yeah, he died. Okay. He did indeed. Yeah. Look at the XP just dramatically fall. Now it's slightly, ever so slightly in EG's favor. Is, uh, gold is still in favor of Liquid, but we talked about it again. When it comes to the Ultra Lake game, the Storm is going to be able to do a lot of work. The amount of dual damage coming on, out onto EUI is starting to get a little bit scary, and now the Liquid push lineup is losing a little bit of their momentum. They're probably going to have to wait for this next Aegis, but then you've got to deal with the Storm with the Bloodstone. Even with the Glyph being popped out, they want to go for the safe route and just make sure that they can push high ground with one of their heroes. The Lycan just getting up on the high ground. Oh, no. Fada. Defending to ones not willing to run into those remnants. They should have vision right there as fear. I'm gonna bump into him in a second here. We're all converging onto their own tier one. Now and out bottom lane while Bulba, he went back for the Maelstrom after the Echo Saber. Oh, fear, are you looking for the Courier Snipe? You're not gonna find it. It's, it is long gone. It's well on its way back home, but it might be actually aiming for Matsumba Man mid. Are you wise? Scamped out by this wolf though, and you'll see it die and then realize that. Well, there wasn't really a chance of jumping onto the Lycan there. Good play by Matsu, keeping that vision over onto them. Good amount of levels on the cores of EG though. What's gonna enable them to stay in this game still. Sumail, even that early buyback, not costing him too much. And that's the crazy thing about Sumail is it feels in some games he gets a little bit too overzealous and he picks up too many deaths. Seven in this game alone, but if you just compare net worth, not, ver not very far behind. In levels, he is so far ahead of the other cores on Liquid. Dragonite right now, Fata still rocking level 11. 
And the Radiant Spirit does get sniped. And Fear, is he gonna pay for his life? They pop the Necro threes and most likely will. Even the Shapeshift expended there by the Silver Man. Is that enough of that bloody bounty hunter? Still. We saw the I think that's enough space that they created. The Necro 3 was used for that. Yeah. He's trying to find wards if he can, potentially. Instead, gonna go for the farm. Courier... Doesn't check that mid area. We found the TP top to look for Legion. Courier was sniped. Necro's popped. Shapeshift down as well. And he were talking about EG trying to stall this push and maybe a little bit of liquid running out of gas, at least for. The next couple of minutes until that Roshan respawns. Yeah, for the time being, EG are in a really good spot. Anytime you can split up and farm with heroes like Storm, you're going to get so far ahead in levels. That's exactly what we're seeing here. As XP now 3k ahead in favor of EG already breaking the largest lead that Liquid had in that uh, regard. And net worth still in Liquid's favor, but big teamfight ultimates, EG have them. And that can close the gap in net worth very quickly. EG all grouped up towards their tier 3 mid. Not gonna actually go for anything there. The scan out from Liquid. Looking for maybe a smoke rotation down towards bottom lane. And of course, this tier 1 down the bottom. It, it's an easy one to go for, for EG potentially, you know, in the grand scheme of things. But Liquid are doing a very good job of defending it and actually looking across the map. Liquid have done an excellent job at keeping all their tier 1s not just alive, but on almost full health. While EG haven't had a leg to stand on. Because they wanted to try and push into them. All it does take though is one fight. Any sort of engagement where EG can push out all three lanes. A Domino's topple. Yeah, they're gonna go for a smoke. EG, they want to fight behind their chrono and might even catch Matumba Man out as he's not careful. They they're gonna go for him from behind though. They catch Matumba Man, but in the back is faster looking for the stun and the damage. Matumba Man dueled up and killed off again. Matumba Man looks to meal! And from the out of the game as AUI turns into the middle of three liquid heroes realize that's not my problem, girl! He's caught in a sprout as well. Fast with a double kill now, sprinting forward, looking for more. But Fear and PPD found a little bit of safety up on the high ground. They've got to try and TP. Oh, Blitz, does this allow them to transfer into a push onto high ground? Yeah, they're going to go for bottom right now. At least deal a little bit of damage as Fada has a bit of that dragon form to go. Trying to punish this. As EG is going to come back now. PPD out of mana, but... Cliff is going to get popped in in 5 seconds, that's going to be a Sumail Storm coming back at you and you're already in position to try to get some tracks off. You're looking at Sumail now, I guess with the fact that, you know, we've talked a lot about the lack of disables here against him, he can just go all out aggression, go for damage, go for stuns and lockdown and all that himself, it looks like it's going to be the Orchid for him. Now who's going to be his primary target? Is that going to be a, an item for kind of solo pickoffs for the meantime? Look for the AA and the Tusk? Yeah, it's going to make it so that Mind Control can't really get out of his base, but oh, even yeah. then, the Orchid's just one of those items on Storm that scale really well with him. Especially since you can grab that Bloodthorn later on into the game. It provides him with mana regen, a bit of flat damage, and more importantly, attack speed. There aren't a lot of attack speed items that most Storm players can feel comfortable going for. And ultra late game, of course, the Moon Shards are alright, but... <laughs> You're not going to buy like a Mjolnir or something yeah. on Storm, e even if you want to be the Super Lightning Wizard. Orchid's just kind of one of those catch-alls. Mm -hmm. It solves just a lot of your issues at once. Good all-round item. Fear. He has seen Mind Control and the rest of EG. They are rampant. Might be another duel into the Radiant Jungle. AUI currently sitting on a flat 100 bonus damage. They're going to see MC and Nature's Prophet. Well, the Snowball Slave comes through. The Ice Blast on the male and AUI. The BKB's forced out. They turn it around again, but the Dark Storm are doing too much. AUI's put in the Sprout. And the Tumor Man just shreds through the ranks of EG. One by one, they fall. Nature's Team Liquid. Where's the mail? TP's out. Nice little ball zap across. Bulba, he was way out of position there. Not uh, a fault of his own, but his team went in way ahead. Yeah. Jerex thought, okay, he's not going to pop the BKB before the duel. Then just snowball right back on top of him. Waste a lot of the time of that duel. Get that AA Ice Blast. And EG, they can still take this fight. They have Chrono available. The buyback's been committed as well, but without fear there, you're not going to get the most even of trades. Mind Control has that Hex now. It's going to make Sumail's life even harder as he's nowhere near a BKB of his own. Oh. 
Range racks are gone. Full trying not to show it, and he might actually just open the mid for them. The heck is just stunned. The crowd is able to touch the attack. They've saved the mail. At least for now, with a rematch going on the attack. Bulba holds them in place, but the damage isn't quite here yet for EG. While Father Duel up, they'll find the kill back onto him, but there's no win for the UI. They need to get a lot of kills out of this as multiple track kills are happening. My control chased down. They've killed off three, and there's the mech back onto him, but he will lose his life and Liquid overextend, even with the perfect play onto the Storm Squid with that newly picked up head. A press the attack from AUI saves everything for EG. More importantly than that, Bulba's counter initiation with the Chrono proving to be the key there for them is now they might have the opportunity to go for the Roshan with four Liquid Heroes down. No contesting this, and this is going to further delay the game and just make things even more worrisome for Team Liquid is Storm with an Aegis obviously going to be very difficult for them to take down. And even more than that, the press the, the, press the attack countering the one disabled that Liquid have to reliably lead with. You can hold it. As long as AUI doesn't get caught out, hold it for the Storm Spirit to save him up. Oh, uh, of course, it was just a range racks mid. Melee still standing, and top is naked. Uh, tier 3 dropped quite some time ago. But EG. Ghost Scepter and a Tome of Knowledge for PPD. Get himself some levels and also give him a little bit. More survivability up against the Dragonite and the Lycan, but I think more importantly those little, little Necro books with the AC Vlads on them and do a hell of a lot of damage back with the minus armor on them. Yeah, Ghost Scepter completed on the Disruptor, just going to make it hard for the right click focus him down. Maybe get a few more spells off in team fights. Ancient Apparition is going to get that Glimmer Cape to help whoever gets caught in that Static Storm. Nobody from Liquid opting to get a BKB, mainly because there's so many different things that can go through it. The duel, you've got obviously the Chronos here going to be the major ability, and Liquid they just have to stop getting Chronoed with so many key targets. It's like three or four man Chronos all day long from Bulba. Yeah, he's been in 15 out of their 20 kills, enabled so much for this team, and there were a lot of doubts coming into this new EG roster, but in this game, he's shining he's very well for himself. He's uh -huh. kept up in farm too, second in. On his team, ahead of the Dragonite by a healthy margin. He has been an absolute star so far. And with that BKB Maelstrom Echo Saber, he can start now looking towards attack speed with Mjolnir. Maybe even go in for something like an Assault Curass himself. Or maybe that's going to be for AUI. He's Chainmail. He's already pretty in his inventory. But finally, finally, EG might get to go and push a tier 1 Tower Blitz. And this is going to be one that Liquid should not contest. They don't have any vision down on the south side of the map. Whereas EG, they've got vision on the lane behind the tier one. They're pushing themselves. Yeah, exactly. And if you set up this well on the side of EG, there's almost no way that Liquid know if they have heroes sitting behind Sumail. It could just be behind here alone, but why risk it? Not for a tier one tower. And now the items are going to start pouring in for EG. Sumail is 3,600 cold after that mid fight. But oh, Liquid wow. are set up. Liquid poking and prodding up a top a little bit, but they want oh, to come back and defend bottom to mail. Oh, 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 oh. There's one really far away. Still has a lot of mana to work with. LTP as well. Yeah, they're even pinging the direct area that he's on top of, but nobody from Liquid ready for that. Fanta, I think, was millimeters away there from stunning. I don't, I don't know if he was in range or if he was maybe just waiting for that perfect opportunity for the rest of his team to come in, but it was very tight. You know, maybe it would have been picked there, or at least had the Aegis burnt and expended. My control returns back up the top, and now the tables have turned a little bit. Liquid are the ones on the back foot having to deal with the push coming in from EG. The fact they've got these items, and EG feel bolstered by this, that they feel, they feel they're ready to go out and fight, and they will smoke themselves up and run towards the tier 1 mid. They should take this fight. They are incredibly strong right now. You can clearly tell that Liquid doesn't want to fight into this Aegis Storm if they can help it. EG is going to use that to their advantage. And they might even catch Jarex here as a hey. blink off. Not today, my dear friends. Not today. Yeah. Sumail still attempt lots of charges. Decently healthy amounts, but Liquid just trying to buy time right now. The Aegis. Oh, he nearly has Lincolns on Storm as well. He is very close to Lincoln Spear. So not only will we have press the attack dispelling disables on him, oh. but they won't even be able to land them onto him. What's going on with the Ice Blast onto Bull? But the BKB turns the Chrono, captures two. Kuroki is the target of choice. Mind control. He can't hex if he's stunned. And the duel comes through as well. AUI catches the kill. There's the duel win. Two down for Liquid. One. 
Down for EG and Sumail just continues running through this enemy base. Evil geniuses, what's that? Liquid? Jirax? And try to snowball into PPD. But evil geniuses, they have a lot of courage behind them and they're finding these kills. Paying off. Yeah. Now you've got even bloodstone charges on a Sumail. More dual damage, 118 to AOI's name. Doing quite well for himself in this game. And Liquid, at some point, it's going to be so hard for them to kill either of these cores. The BKB void lasted for so long, too. And the thing is that Chrono was used so early on in the team fight that even if Liquid were to go, right, Chrono's down, we can go and push, we can go and fight. He can't, because Mind Control's dead for so long that when he's alive, it'll only be like 20, 15 seconds or so that the void will have to wait for Chrono to be back up. Yeah, that's going to be the Lincolns now onto the storm. Blink Dagger's going to be the choice for mind controls. They need a more reliable way to start these fights. Most of it is just Liquid getting initiated on and trying to hold the line. Maybe with this Blink Hex, they can make something happen. The spot is going to go Silver Edge in. And that gold lead, at some point that was nearing 12k. Almost at zero. It has plummeted for Team Liquid, and they've got this Observer Ward up at the top, Rax. They really wanted to try and utilize that maybe a little bit better, but not having the opportunity. Glyph, of course, is available again for Evil Geniuses to defend their base. With all the lanes. Controlled up by Liquid now. Matumba Man, 3200 saved up. Been holding on to Quelling Blade and TP for quite some time. Now, after the Vlad's AC and the Necrobook, the kind of regular pushing items and a little bit of fighting, a little bit of battling from the Lycan. What does he really aim to do here? Because pushing all in, it hasn't worked so far. Or are you waiting for that one big fight to enable yourself to go in? Maybe he even gets, grabs a little bit more flat HP. Could decide to go for a heart of his own. BKB, obviously. DK heart, Lycan heart. Yeah. Just gets very tanky. Is up at top. Liquid. Sumail. They pop a lot of different abilities. And back of the mind control. The Blast isn't going to hit anyone. with completely in the MC. Gone. The BKB from Bulba. He still has that chrono too. Liquid have to get out of here. Well, Bulba's a caught in it. The Ice Shard's trying to block him in. That's a nice little bit of safety there for the DK. For the jumping from AUI. Look for the duel. Turns back with the stun. About to catch him. AUI's being burnt through and he's gone. A lot of shell will not save you from anyone. Sumail. The Lincoln is popped and he's dead as well. The static storm from PPD. It doesn't do a bloody thing to save you from this monstrous dragon for Vata from Liquid. All of a sudden, Liquid turned that around. They don't even hit the Ice Blast. They get caught by the Chrono. They don't hex anyone. They have damage. I'm not sure how they were able to hold that one. PPD immediately going to buy back. They don't want to do it on the Storm if they can help it. AUI does have the buyback available, but they can't really afford to give up the second set of racks. I think the blink into the Chrono from AUI, you know, it's... It's the move he wanted to make for the duel onto the DK, but those ice shards from Jira. Yeah, they ended up just popping him immediately as a result. Those ice shards were perfect as well, because they just created this barrier inside the Chrono, all the way around. No one could touch the... And for a second, it really looked like EG were just kind of rolling. Yeah, they had all of this momentum built up. Team fights were going in the direction. At the top, they lost the Nature's Prophet, who has the second amount of uh, highest net worth in the game. And he wasn't able to get anything off, and they still win the fight. No AA Ice Blast. Insane stuff. Yeah, EG just got a little bit too overconfident there. Still though, no objectives taken by Liquid after that fight. Yeah, Rack maybe still it, was, it was intentional. You know, miss everything. Yeah. Lose your second high still win. hero, still win the fight. <laughs> Look what we can do to you, even without our strongest abilities and heroes. Cower in fear, evil geniuses, because Liquid, they are after you, and they seem to have your number. 32 to 23. Now, 38 minutes in now, and, and we have seen a bit of a, a bimodal distribution in games. We see a lot of sort of 35, 40 minute games or 65, 70 minute games as things do drag out and both teams even up in terms of farm and. Was the work. BKB, by the way, on Matama Man and a heart finally completed oh, yeah. on Fada. They've got a decent amount of farm now to back themselves up. And Fada, who is almost always getting blown up in those Chronospheres, now has a lot of HP to back up his armor, making it even more effective. They are tanky, tanky guys. AG, time to chill at the Winchester, have a pint, and hope this all blows over, because right now, in Liquid, they are starting to knock on their front doors. Evil Genius is actually moving out of their base here. Bulba, Fear, far forward, Sumail, of course. Now with a plate mail looking for that Shiver's Guard, but 
Liquid, top and mid, looking for these two full lanes of barracks. Dragon Knight. Oh, Fear's gonna get spotted here. Nice four staff. The Echo Shell on him as well. It's gonna be difficult to catch. Not all Bounty Hunter, but Fanta is invis. Silver Edge. Some TPD in the Ice Blast lands down. Not gonna catch any heroes as Samael just tries to slow things down. Well, Bomba's in the middle of this Where is Bulba going? BKB is up, but doesn't Chrono. He's gonna go down in a second oh, here. There we go. On to Fanta. Dragonite is not Thor. the target that you wanna go for, though. To kill him off. The damage isn't there. The Trojan bounces back and forth to death. Samael pumped to sprint away. And Bulba to get the bounce. And the Urax will fall in the Glippers here. But Evil Genius is by back. There on the void. What's AUI? He's in the middle of four. He went in alone. There's no one to save him. They're bleeding blue, but they're bleeding for nothing. Evil geniuses, they're gonna lose two lanes of racks for two buybacks come out. But Blitz, what have they got left to give? They don't have the Chronosphere available, the duels on cooldown too, and Sumail's just gonna have to make this happen for whatever how he can. Tank, he pops his BKB and says, yeah, what up, Sumail? Come at me, bro! X back onto him! There's the pet attack with a lot of sword back onto Sumail as well, but Liquid run through every single player of evil geniuses and then run the hell back out after they've taken two full lanes of barracks. So many opportunities for EG to win this game as they battled back from that 12k deficit, almost bringing it back to zero at one point, all the way down to 1k and XP. Well on their way to a 10k lead. They had a lot of dual damage built up on AUI, 136 already. Storm Spirit was getting a decent amount of Bloodstone charges, and then all of a sudden that one fight at top starts the momentum. Then that mid engagement where they just lost so many different heroes. The Chronosphere on Afada once again. Fata's just got to be sitting in his booth laughing right now because this is the last me. target that you want to go for the Chronosphere on. But it's not like you can leave him alone because as soon as you disengage, that heart regen starts to kick back in. Now EG are in a position, a little bit desperate, two racks behind. They have to go for this Vegas if they can help it. Fear, going to run into Matama, man. He's going to scout ahead. And I've got a gem on the Storm single. The Wolfies come through and he's actually going to jump on to... Uh... Kuroki in the back, but the big wolf is here now. Mana expended by Samil, comes back into the field, but the Tumul Man is actually sprinting through and he's still holding onto his BKB. He's got Chrono too. Cooldown right now, Bulba, there we go, catches the wolf. The damage output, where is it? Samil, zip over the front now, into Matsumba Man, wailing into this wolf for the BKB. Pops and turns, the Chris come through! Matsumba Man, 1v3 almost! Samil running out of mana fast! He's got nothing left, the Stag Storm's gonna hold their place, but the BKB's here from Team Liquid, and Samil is chasing Jirak! Snowball, through! That's Brown! That's Samil! The Chivas guy is gonna get the kill, but he loses his life. And a five-man wipe. Team Liquid. Looking hot at Epicenter. I'm not sure how they're making these fights work. Minus two here on the TPD calls good game it's before over. Rat Rex even falls. Steaming performance from Team Liquid. Two zeroing evil geniuses here. What a cracking series. Looked a little bit a little bit sloppy in the mid game, but Liquid eventually making it happen. And this is what happens when you play against this kind of push lineup. All it takes is one or two mistakes. Now you're down two sets of racks. And EG after that last fight decide no buybacks available. Nothing left to fight.